Hi class, so today we're going to learn about cell structure. So let's get started. So what is a cell? A cell is the smallest unit of life. So the smallest thing that has all of the properties of living things. Now some organisms, such as the one shown here, are single celled or sometimes called unicellular, as in their whole body consists of just one cell. While other organisms, such as this dog, the grass, the dandelions, and even you, consist of multiple cells that all work together as a whole. Now let's first take a look at what you will learn in this lesson. So we will first discuss the structures that all cells share in common. And then we'll take a closer look at types of cells called prokaryotic, and at the end have just a short introduction to eukaryotic cells. And there will be a later lesson in which you will learn more about eukaryotic cells. Ready? So all cells on Earth can be categorized into two major types, prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. And I hope you can see based on these illustrations that eukaryotic cells have a lot more different structures in them than prokaryotic cells. So they are much more complex. Additionally, if I made these illustrations more to scale, it should look like this. So prokaryotic cells are much, much tinier than eukaryotic cells. So which organisms on the planet have, are prokaryotic versus eukaryotic? Well, all of life can be separated into three so-called domains. And these domains are called bacteria, archaea, and eukarya. Bacteria and archaea all have single-celled organisms and they are all prokaryotic. The domain eukarya consists of both single-celled organisms as well as multicellular organisms and they all have eukaryotic cells. All cells are made up of many specialized components. So both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells have structures that each have a unique function. And we're going to first focus on structures that both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells share in common. The first one we'll talk about is the plasma membrane. So the plasma membrane is this outer blue layer that surrounds the whole cell. It kind of keeps the cell together as one structure. And its main function is that it controls what goes into and out of the cell. It is considered to be semi-permeable. Permeable means that things can go in and out. Semi means not everything. So some molecules can enter, but others cannot. The structure of the plasma membrane is that it is primarily composed of a phospholipid bilayer. So you've learned about phospholipid molecules before, and so here you can see two layers. But this is a simplified picture of a plasma membrane. In reality, it looks more like this bottom picture, where there are also proteins as well as some additional molecules interspersed between the phospholipids. So these blue molecules here are the proteins interspersed between the phospholipids. The next structure we'll talk about are chromosomes. So all cells have a DNA which contains instructions to make proteins. Now, the, if you were going to stretch out the DNA in a single cell, it would be tremendously long. Just to give you a visual, if I took all of the DNA in a single human cell and lined it up, it would be about six and a half feet long. And yet it fits into this microscopic cell. So the DNA has to be packaged in a special way that's shown here to fit into these tiny cells. So I have a vocab word for you, chromatin. Chromatin is when the DNA is packaged around specialized proteins. And a chromosome is a single structure composed of chromatin, the DNA and the packaging proteins. And a ribosomes are special structures in all cells whose function is to build all the proteins in a cell. So the DNA has instructions to make your proteins and ribosomes are the structures that build those proteins. 
So a ribosome has a fairly complex structure made up of multiple molecules kind of complexed together. Um, it's made up of both uh, molecules called ribosomal RNA or rRNA for short, as well as proteins. And here's a little animation of a ribosome in the process of making a protein. And you'll learn more about this later. And lastly, we have the cytoplasm and the cytosol. So the cytoplasm are all of the internal components of the cell. So everything within the plasma membrane can be referred to as the cytoplasm. In eukaryotic cells, it's actually everything except this ball in the middle called the nucleus. So all of the internal components except for the nucleus are referred to as the cytoplasm. The cytosol, on the other hand, is the gel-like fluid that surrounds all of the internal cellular structures. In prokaryotic cells, there isn't really much to distinguish the cytoplasm and the cytosol, but in eukaryotic cells, just this gel-like fluid that surrounds all of those other structures is the cytosol, whereas the cytoplasm includes those structures. Now the cytosol, while it might not seem exciting because it's just a gel-like fluid, it is very important to the cell. It is where many of the cell's chemical reactions occur. Okay, so here I just have a diagram of the eukaryotic versus prokaryotic cell, pointing out those structures that they all share in common. So both eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells are surrounded by a plasma membrane. They have this internal gel-like fluid called the cytosol. They have ribosomes that build their proteins, which are very important for cellular function. And they have chromosomes that have the instructions to make those proteins. And now we're going to take a closer look at prokaryotic cells. Up till now, I've just been showing you this simplified picture, but I wanted you to also appreciate that there's a great diversity of structures and shapes among prokaryotic cells. So here we have microscope images of four different species of bacteria, and on the right, four different species of archaea. So you can see they don't all look the same. There's quite a lot of diversity. But we're gonna go back to this sample diagram, uh, which is going to represent our stereotypical prokaryote. So in green, we have the plasma membrane, which we discussed before, that helps to control what molecules can enter and exit the cell. Then outside of that is another layer referred to as the cell wall. So in yellow, we have the cell wall. The cell wall is more rigid and provides structure to the cell. The components of the cell wall vary among bacteria and archaea and even among different species, and it can help scientists distinguish one species from another. And then some prokaryotes, but not all, have this another layer outside of that called a capsule, which can help them stick to surfaces or to each other. Then we have that internal gel-like fluid, the cytoplasm or cytosol, and in red, we have the DNA. In prokaryotes, they have a circular DNA. Now, I know this doesn't really look like a circle, but think of it as like a giant circle that gets mushed up and coiled together. There's no specific structure surrounding the DNA, but it's in a specialized region of the cytoplasm that's often referred to as the nucleoid. Um, many prokaryotes also have these little circular DNA molecules that are referred to as plasmids, and you will learn more about those later. And then we have the ribosomes that make proteins based on the instructions in the DNA. And then some other structures we didn't discuss before is some prokaryotes have these little extensions uh, sticking out of them called the pili, and some have a tail called a flagellum that can help them swim. Now, eukaryotic cells are much more complex than prokaryotic cells. The defining features of eukaryotic cells is that they have what we call membrane-bound organelles. The word organelle kind of means little organ. 
So kind of the way in your entire body, different organs have specialized functions. Well, within each one of your cells, there's these little structures called organelles that all also have specialized functions. And they are referred to as membrane bound because they are surrounded by membranes, kind of like the plasma membrane. The other defining characteristic of eukaryotic cells is that their DNA is enclosed in an organelle called the nucleus. So prokaryotic DNA was not enclosed in any structure. It was just in a region of the cell called the nucleoid. But the nucleus is an actual specialized structure that holds DNA of eukaryotic cells. So the last um, thing I wanted to talk about with you in part one is what might be the advantage of having these specialized organelles in eukaryotic cells. So as I just told you, one of the big differences between prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells is that prokaryotic cells do not have those membrane-bound organelles but eukaryotic cells do. They create these little compartments. So I want to leave you with this question. What advantage does this compartmentalization provide to eukaryotic cells? I'd like you to think about it, write it down, and we'll discuss it in class.